What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and this is Fred, and welcome back to Azerinth Healer, Book One by Rhaegar. Is he gonna stand here the entire time? Are you? Chapter Twenty Five: Woman and Monster. Dale smiled, amused at the turn of events. Ilya definitely knew how to make an entrance. This is already the most interesting day in a week, Dale thought, as he motioned to Gary. Gary, you'll face her highness, for your royal insult. See what the queen can do, and don't hold back, she can heal herself. He smiled at her as he joined the other spectators. She's leveled up absurdly fast. If she's just a healer, she'll get messed up by Gary. But something tells me that isn't quite what's going to happen. Gary, a level 43 warrior, unsheathed this sword and stift stiftly bowed to her. He carried the standard guard-issued sword and shield and wore leather armor. He had a clean, muscular build and was one of the more experienced recruits. Because of this, his eyes turned from embarrassed to focused in an instant. Dale was proud that, even in a situation like this, his men always became serious and professional when he asked them to do so. Ilya also got into a fighting stance. She's going to fight him unarmed. That's even more interesting. The blue aura she had briefly activated earlier wasn't present now, yet her eyes were focused as well, a grin spreading on her face. She's changed more than just her levels, hasn't she? Gary wasn't bothered by the lack of a weapon and assumed she was a mage, raising his shield a bit more, ready to dodge a ranged attack. He waited for Dale's signal. Go! Dale shouted, and both of them sprang into action. She's graceful, at least one dedicated fighting skill in there, and she's fast. Her reflexes are good, too. Why would a healer invest in any of that, Dale thought, as the two advanced on each other. Ilya with aggressive abandon and Gary in a careful, defensive fashion. They came together, and Gary slashed at her horizontally. Ilya just dodged the blow and closed the distance in seconds. Her punch was blocked by his shield, and the guard skidded back several feet from the impact. So she's a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. That was a powerful strike, but... Nothing special for someone of her level. Being able to heal herself, though, Dale mused about the possibilities, but came to the conclusion that using a sword and being able to heal, heal would still be the superior style. It's certainly a surprise, especially with her healer class. Most healers forced to do any kind of fighting use ranged weapons. He analyzed the fight as three more blows were blocked by Gary. Now fully on the defensive, the young guard slashed at her from above, and Ilya simply caught his sword. What the? A guard next to Dale exclaimed, his jaw hanging open. Turning the blade aside, Ilya smiled at Gary and punched him square in the chest, sending the man sprawling on the ground some distance away. She caught the sword? What are you doing? So what you think, she asked Dale, having helped Gary back to his feet. She was smiling, clearly pleased with herself. Many of the guardsmen were clapping, but Dale himself was not easily impressed. In fact, Dale could tell Ilya had held back almost all of her skills. She had a skill that told him she hadn't expended a single point of mana during the entire fight. You're very graceful and strong. Your movements are, how should I put it, they seem exaggerated. The first blow you dodged from Gary, for example. It was executed well, but you moved too far, losing the opening it would have given you. Ilya leaned in like she was soaking in his words. Had she never had an instructor before, it was lucky she'd come to him then. He'd been whipping amateur brawlers into proper fighters for years. You have a skill for moving, for fighting with your body, or am I wrong, he asked, and she just nodded. Then you should use it. Either the skill isn't high enough level, or you're disregarding parts of what it's telling you. She looked confused. It seems no one has taught her the basics of martial arts. I'm not sure what you mean, Dale. I don't think the level of the skill is the problem, though. He grunted affirmatively to her reply. All fighting classes or skills will let you move instinctively in the right way. You just have to trust them. Even if your mind is telling you that the sword will hit you, if you trust the skill and its level is high enough, you'll be fine. 
the way she looked at him made him continue. I know it might sound stupid. Compare it to an ice mage instinctively knowing how to control or create the element with his mana. That comes from a passive skill the class grants him. A comparable passive skill for a warrior is battle sense or swordsmanship. As soon as a skill reaches a high enough level, you know instinctively how to get better at it. Continuous training will let you level up the skill, and the skill will help you move in the right direction. In a fight, you have to be able to trust your instincts. Your mind will often be too slow to react. Ilya muttered to himself, likely thinking Dale couldn't hear her, but his perception skills were rather high. Insightful. Sounds like something that'd be said in a samurai movie. Dale wasn't entirely sure what a samurai movie was, but then Ilya had always been a strange one. The comparison with ice manipulation makes sense to me. My fire manipulation works similarly, and when I try to consciously control it with my mind, it's much harder than just feeling it out. It sounded like her thoughts were going in the right direction, so Dale said nothing. New recruits needed to figure some of the stuff out for themselves. She went back to where she had stood at the start of the fight. Thank you for the guidance, she looked at her beaten opponent. Gary, was it? Another round? Dale leaned in to give Gary a few pointers. This was a learning opportunity for the lad as well. Gary nodded, and Ilya got back into a fighting stance. Let's see if that helped, he thought, and he watched as Ilya closed her eyes. Wait, she's closing her eyes? Go, he shouted, and Gary immediately advanced. Knowing now that she was a hand-to-hand -hand fighter, he was much less wary of ranged attacks. He reached her in moments, slashing at her from the side. He didn't hesitate for a moment, despite his opponent's closed eyes. Good lad. At that moment, Ilya took a small step backwards, the sword passing centimeters before her. Gary followed up with a twirl of his body and a shield bash with his left arm. Ilya still, with her eyes closed, crouched and turned with him, dodging the shield entirely. Her movement was more akin to a dance than a fighting style. Turning around, Gary slashed from above, a small sidestep from her, and his sword passed harmlessly through the air, the flat part of his weapon briefly touching her scale bracer. Ilya opened her eyes as Gary thrust his sword directly at her, and a metallic ringing noise reverberated through the training area. She had deflected the blow entirely with her left arm and bracer. A grin grew on Ilya's face, and she got into a fighting stance again. Let's go another round. Gary didn't let himself be taunted, and unleashed a fury of sword slashes and thrusts at her, interspersed by a couple of shield thrusts, kicks, and even punches. All of them were swiftly dodged or deflected at the last moment with incredible ease. The other guardsmen were completely speechless, as they likely couldn't believe the girl was the same person they'd seen fighting just a moment before. Dale was less surprised. He'd known there was more to her than meets the eye. This time is up. His time is up, he thought, as a lightning-quick punch crashed into Gary's stomach after a fluid dodge had seen Ilya pass within a hair's breadth of his sword. Gary buckled as air exploded from his lungs, the sword falling to his side, but Ilya caught him as he fell and propped him back up. Thanks for the fight, Gary, she said. Gary struggled to even bow to her in response. Thank you for the demonstration, he wheezed, still catching his breath, after being thoroughly winded. I'll work harder to improve. Next time we meet, I won't be bested so easily. But Dale knew that what the girl had just demonstrated was a level of skill that Gary wouldn't reach in the near future, if ever. She was something else entirely. The onlookers clapped. They'd all seen good fights before, so this wasn't something completely mind-blowing, but it was definitely impressive. Dale knew they were all a little jealous, some likely writing off her superior skills as a result of her being born talented or coming from a family of privilege. Dave himself, though, thought, and hopefully most of the others, was happy to have another healer around, especially one who could defend herself. That was quite the demonstration. I don't think I could have beaten you with skill alone, but I'll definitely give it my best shot. I definitely gave it my best shot, Dale said from the side as he prepared his gear. Donning his helmet and shield, he walked to where Gary had stood before. 
facing the girl he had seen her in her first real facing the girl he had seen in her first real fight he was proud in a way to see that she had reached this level Dare dale cared a lot for the people he trained and fought with and he counted strays like her to be a part of the family just as much as he did his own men also she had listened to his advice even though she seemed cocky at first which showed she at least had some brains as well as brawn on the other hand, he was also excited to fight her and hopefully teach her a lesson or two. He was her senior, after all, and his experience vastly outclassed hers. Are you ready, he called out, as the girl ch changed into her fighting stance. Yes, sir, she shouted back, which put a smile on his face. Maybe we can recruit her, after all. Activating his aura skill that strengthened his muscles and heightened his reactions, he crouched low and readied his shield. I'll have to end this one quickly. I don't want to turn out like Gary. Using his dash skill, he closed the distance in a blur, following up with a shield bash. The skill released a burst of kinetic force much greater than the shield itself could have ever produced. A shock wave ran through his left arm as he was stopped in his tracks. Locking eyes with Ilya, she grinned. The shield bash had only pushed her back half a meter, and she had blocked the full force of it with her arms crossed. It's a lot stronger than I thought. Gary would have been hurled like a rag doll into the opposite wall if I used that on him. He followed up with a sword strike, but Ilya dodged it seemingly just as easily as the ones from Gary. Dale confirmed her superior movement when a kick and two more sword strikes were dodged just as easily as the first. Dale immediately stepped back to get some distance. He wanted to prevent her from using any openings she created by dodging his swings. Let her come, then, he thought, and he raised his shield. His sword was poised for a quick jab. Ilya approached. Dale's sword lashed out like a cobra striking at its prey, and flew harmlessly past her side as she dodged it with the smallest of movements. He activated Cognitive Burst, a trump skill of his, and his perception and speed immediately accelerated. Predicting her next attack, the world slowed to a crawl for him as he redirected his sword jab with unnatural force towards her again. Got you now, he thought. Their eyes locked, and he saw the grin still plastered on her face. A sudden blue glow flared to life from the rows of runic tattoos that covered her body. It was barely noticeable in the sunlight, but Dale knew the girl had activated her own trump card. His strike was unerring, but only air was there to greet it. Then a pain blossomed in his side, just behind his shield, and a shockwave rocked through him. The world spun, and his back smashed into something solid, pushing the last remaining air out of his lungs. His ears rang as he heard muffled shouting from around him. He started to fall, but then he was caught as blood filled his mouth. Teach her a lesson, huh? Was all he could think before unconsciousness took him. Oh, fuck, sorry, I overdid it, Ilya shouted. She was the first one to arrive at Dale's side. The man had been half embedded in one of the sparring square's walls. She had caught him as he fell, immediately starting to heal his injuries. Six minutes later, two guards came rushing into the training yard. A small, lithe, lithe man in leather armor in tow. He breathed heavily as he knelt down next to Ilya and checked on Dale. He's fine. Why did you call me, you idiots, he said. He was heavily injured. Life, you said he was heavily injured. Life-threatening. Noticing an unpleasant smell, Ilya looked at the man and realized where he'd come from. Oh, I'm a healer, too. They didn't trust me. It's fine if you go back and clean up. She smiled at the man as she identified him. Healer, level 53. His face turned a bit red. Apologies, I do have to take these claims seriously, though. He turned away from Ilya. You guys owe me, he shouted at the two guards, who winced at his rage as the healer walked back the way he'd come. A brown stain clearly visible on his undergarments. Dale woke up in a daze, coughing a couple times while getting his bearings. The coughing hurt. I passed out, he said quietly, and rest his, rested his head back on the ground. Healer my ass, he closed his eyes and smiled. You might have won had it not been f for your advice before. 
It was Ilya's voice, but he didn't answer. I doubted, he thought to himself. Once he was fully healed, which happened surprisingly fast, Dale excused himself from the other guards and led Ilya to his office. You were still holding back the entire time, weren't you? I was. Only my body enhancing spells, though. My first fight with Gary wasn't me playing around, she said. Thank you again for your advice. I'll take it to heart. Anything else you noticed? I should be asking you instead. Your technique is more refined than mine, and your speed is faster than even my best skill. Well, second best, he thought, but using a fatal skill in a training match would be beyond unreasonable. And who says that was her full power, either? I don't have anything for you, either. That last skill was impressive. Had you known about my abilities, I might it might have even worked, Ilya said, likely trying to boost his spirits, but Dale knew when he'd been beaten, fair and square. Switching topics, Ilya started talking about her exploits in the past couple weeks. It took some time, and even then, Dale was fairly sure she was leaving certain things out. Fire Enhancer. Quite impressive. She got a new class in a couple of weeks? I don't want to know what she had to do for that. His mind conjured up images of the quirky healer covered in blood. She must have killed hundreds of creatures to get this strong. In his imagination, the girl was grinning, transforming into some kind of battle-crazed maniac. The story continued. Stalker hounds above level 90, you say? The bloodthirsty fighter was growing more dangerous in his mind by the second. And you were there alone? That's quite something. He felt the blood drain from his face as the conversation went on. She could have killed me in that sparring match. I'm not sure how Abby would have explained that one to the kids. Oh, what, he said, turning his attention back to the fierce girl. Had she just asked a question? I asked how you'd been doing. After the elven attack a month ago, I'm sure there's been a lot going on. The city seems mostly fine for now, though. Rallying his energy, Dale focused on the question at hand. A lot of people have left the city. We've helped rebuild and patrolled the surrounding areas. The elves haven't shown themselves since. It's easier for people to ignore it now, you know. The constant danger of being out here on the frontier. He sighed. Citizens forgot things quickly, but guards like him always remembered. Even though their house might have been burned down a month ago, it's rebuilt now and they're alive. Luckily, we still have some mages to help with that. Hating and blaming the elves is easy. The attack didn't change how anyone feels about them. We've increased our training and patrols heavily, though. Next week, we'll start going into nearby dungeons and dangerous areas to make ourselves stronger. I can't say we've always been as vigilant and disciplined as we should have been. But starting now is the best we can do, he said, feeling slight guilt that he had not pushed his own comrades harder and leveled faster. I just don't get it, you know, Ilya started, but then she trailed off. She looked at the wall behind him as he waited for her to continue. She's definitely more thoughtful than before. You, we have the opportunity to strengthen ourselves, to work hard and fight back. One person's efforts alone can save a whole city, she paused. Like the shields Esteban raised above his head in the arena to protect the people inside. He might not have saved the city, but he certainly saved hundreds of lives. Dale nodded. It was something the new recruits often mentioned. If everyone trained like the guards, the city wouldn't even need them. Ah, the optimism of the young. I know what you mean. Most feel content to be protected by the strong, though, Dale replied. Growing your own power is dangerous. Few actively embrace that danger. They live their daily lives, not dreaming of improvement and adventure, instead impressed by the next arena fights or the next live show at the tavern, not realizing they could be that same person fighting or performing. He got up and came back with a bottle and two glasses. I hope Juice is fine, I'm on duty, he said, filling the glasses at her nod. And you've been out there. I remember how you looked next to the burning caravan and the dead adventurers. He softened his tone. Not everyone can face something like that, can overcome it and become stronger through it. I'm not ashamed to say that I wouldn't go into a dungeon by myself either, although I know it would be the fastest and best way to improve my own strength and the ability to protect those I love. She drank some of the juice as he leaned back. It's just so more graspable than, she trailed off, than where I'm from. 
His eye, her eyes grew distant, and Dale decided not to press her about her origins despite his curiosity. To be able to stand when someone threatens you or someone you hold dear, to be able to save those injured with fatal wounds, what other choice do you have but to fight when such things are possible? Dale smirked a little at that. He doubted Ilya's intentions were quite so noble. She was a good kid, but he could recognize one who was addicted to the thrill of battle. Much had changed since that day with the bandits. Seeing his expression, her lip curled upward. I know I'm being unfair. I love fighting, the thrill, the power. It's just a bit confusing to me that not more people choose a similar way of going about it. In his youth, Dale had often wondered why more people didn't join the guard. He no longer wondered. There was a weighty responsibility that came with power, and danger too. I understand. Many still do choose your way, and many of those die, leaving behind grieved parents or lovers. The others, well, Dale trailed off and grimaced. What? she asked, a smile coming to her face. You, well, I'm quite the maniac, I'm well aware of that, she said, as he mirrored her smile. You sure are. Fucking fire enhancer in less than a month, he answered, mumbling the latter half of the sentence. What level were you when you first fought the stalker hounds, he asked, then immediately regretted it. She was opening her mouth to answer, but he stopped her. No, thinking about it, I don't want to know. Before Ilya could say anything else, Dale lifted his glass. To protecting our loved ones, he declared. To killing monsters, she said, as their glasses clinked together. And that is the end of chapter 25. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.